Hi everyone, welcome back to Pretty Well. Dr. Angela here with you. In this video, we're gonna focus on palpitations and specifically COVID palpitations. Palpitations can come on for a number of reasons. Um, you know, they're common for some people if they're exhausted or they've had too much caffeine. Sometimes um, hormonal shifts like going into menopause can cause palpitations. But um, COVID uh, definitely has been associated with bringing on palpitations for some people. I had them really bad. Many of you guys have watched the previous uh, video that I put up about my experience with my whole COVID journey. And one of those pieces was really uh, wrapped around kind of a dysautonomia period where my nervous system was pretty dysregulated and I had big fluctuations in heart rate, in blood pressure, um, in heart rhythm. And so, um, you know, palpitations were definitely a very uh, big piece of the syndrome that I was going through and it was miserable. <laughs> it was really hard to settle down and get any kind of meditation in. It was really hard to sleep. Um, it was very unnerving to just feel a really rat erratic heart beat and rhythm just going on all throughout the day. And so I want to share with you um, what I did, what I learned, which things really helped me recover uh, so that you can work with your own care team uh, and make sure that you're getting the nutrients in and the specifics in that are helpful to your recovery. So definitely like everything else we talk about here on this channel, it's really important to get a proper workup done to figure out you know, what is the underlying cause of the symptom that you're having. So with palpitations, you know, anytime there's cardiac stuff going on, we want to go in and get things like an EKG done, definitely blood work to check for things like electrolyte shifts. Uh, an event monitor can be very helpful too in terms of diagnosing more than just the moment that you're on a machine. Cause you right, you go in to get an EKG and it's kind of like that five minutes, whatever's going on at that specific pinpoint in time. But, you know, with COVID, a lot of us are having erratic shifts where things are very up and down. And so, you know, it could be that the time that you go in, nothing is showing up. And I had that happen with four different EKGs and I've had that happen. Um, some of my patients have um, shared with me that similar things happened. Um, I did have tachycardia, so very elevated heart rate, which is really common in COVID. Um, my resting heart rate, is normally in the 60s and um, I was well over 130 with this kind of post COVID stuff that was going on for me. Um, so very uncomfortable. And that showed up on my EKGs just that I had an elevated heart rate, but no arrhythmia was captured on my EKG. And when I had an event monitor on me for a week, um, there were some episodes of ventricular tachycardia, supraventricular tachycardia. Mostly my heart um, rhythm was normal and it was just that my heart was beating really fast and you know really hard. I was feeling my heart constantly um, and it was really uncomfortable. But most of what was going on was not actually very dangerous, although it was very uncomfortable. Um, you know, about 5% of my event monitor was a little bit more questionable. Um, I had big fluctuations in terms of pulse rate as well. So on the event monitor, as low as a 44 to as high as 250 beats per minute. So very, very big swings in my vitals that were happening. And so I was definitely dealing with palpitations during that time. And um, I also had an echocardiogram done. And so the echocardiogram looks with an ultrasound to just make sure structurally everything is okay in the heart and everything was. And for me, what you know became apparent between my repeated blood tests, um, and then I had another opportunity uh, where I saw something happen where I took a medication, I took an antibiotic down the line because of another issue that happened, an infection, and I again dealt with electrolyte shifts and I had this whole cascade of palpitations um, and erratic heartbeat start up again. So um, the nutrients that I put in 
that were extremely helpful for my recovery in terms of palpitations, kind of a three prong approach. I really dealt with electrolyte repletion and mind you, I eat a very nutrient dense, nutrient dense diet. I eat a lot of potassium and a lot of sodium, um, you know, so I wasn't not taking in the nutrients in my diet. It's just that because of everything going on with COVID, post COVID, my nervous system had changed um, the way my autonomic nervous system was controlling things was different um, i definitely was in a kind of hyper aroused state uh, very anxious hard to sleep um, <laughs> just very very revved up i couldn't meditate um, so with that you can have extra urination happen when you're in a state of heightened arousal. And so basically I would eat stuff, I would drink stuff and it would just be going right through me, right through me. And so I really had to focus a lot to <laughs> replete myself with extra electrolytes. So, you know, many of the electrolyte drinks on the market are very full of food coloring and sugars and I didn't want that. And so my go-tos during my recovery period, I use this one right here from Amazing Grass. Um, I used one tablet one to two times daily. There's different flavors, but it's stevia sweetened, so there isn't sugar in there. Um, and then I also, this has been one of my like favorite go-tos for years. It's called the Adrenal Cocktail by Jigsaw, and I'll list all these in the description box as usual, but it's just basically a little bit of vitamin C along with sodium and potassium in bigger doses. Now, just the one kind of thing to say about potassium. Potassium is very calming um, when we do have palpitations and erratic heart rhythm going on. However, we need to stay in the sweet spot with our potassium. And so people can get into trouble if they're taking medications already that do um, change the levels of potassium in their body. Like some people will be on blood pressure medications or other medications that keep extra potassium in the body. And so you just wanna kind of get a baseline of where you're running. You don't wanna be high in potassium, you don't wanna be low in potassium. I was chronically running low in sodium and potassium, and so these things were very helpful to me. So just you know, making sure we're getting great medical workup and working with our medical team um, to monitor what we're doing. Um, the other things that I did, taurine was very, very helpful. Taurine is an amino acid that helps get uh, different electrolytes across cell membranes. So sometimes communication, you know, getting those nutrients across cell membranes isn't happening optimally and taurine can be very helpful. I noticed um, my palpitations went way down in terms of frequency when I integrated taurine and that was very calming because I my first go-to was actually magnesium, you know, because magnesium is so soothing to the nervous system and <laughs> I actually had a little bit of like, you know, increased heart rate when I did it, an increased erratic beat. And so then I pulled out the magnesium, I did the other electrolytes, I put taurine in, and then I was able to tolerate magnesium. And then it was actually helpful, but it just took a minute to stabilize things. And then CoQ10 is the other really, really important one for many people in terms of normal, calm heart rhythm. CoQ10 really supports mitochondrial function. Um, the heart is a muscle and it has a huge need for healthy mitochondria because it's constantly active. You know, every moment we're alive and breathing and our heart's beating for us, we need that muscle working well and um, the heart to have enough energy to do its job properly. And you know, COVID is a very interesting virus and it takes a lot of energy for various reasons in terms of all the things that are going on internally. And so, um, dealing with lower antioxidant levels is really common with COVID. Um, so electrolyte, re sorry, not electrolyte, antioxidant repletion, which then supports mitochondrial function, very helpful. And that's actually very helpful for heart function as well. So normal heart rhythm and rate. So all of the electrolytes plus CoQ10, and then um, the other approaches that I chose to use that were really helpful for me, I chose to also do things to calm my nervous system down. So I chose to integrate GABA and theanine um, to just calm my nervous system since I was really up here most of the time. Um, and you know, part of the frequent urination that happens with excessive nervous system stimulation kind of exacerbates the problem of losing electrolytes. So I was trying to do things to strategically 
replete my electrolytes and keep my electrolytes in my body. And then the other thing I did was to really focus on taking nutrients that would support the health of my neurons. Um, all of the part of my nervous system that's regulating things like blood pressure, heart rate, all of that. Um, and so I chose to do fish oils that are high in DHA. If you are plant-based, you can definitely use um, algae oils that are high in DHA as well as an alternative. Um, I chose to use really good quality vitamin E tocopherols mainly. I did also do tocotrienols for a period of time and separated you know, the timing of the day because that's important. Um, and I'll put those notes in the description box so that you guys can reference that. Um, selenium, alpha lipoic acid. So just really doing things that are gonna support brain health, neurons, mitochondria, calming the nervous system, repleting the electrolytes. That was really kind of the magic formula that really, really made a difference for me in terms of calming everything down. Um, I did have, you know, kind of an up and down ride for various reasons. And um, when I was going through an acute flare, I did also choose to see uh, a naturopathic doctor to get intravenous hydration and nutrient therapy as well to just really energize my cells, support the mitochondria again, support those electrolytes. And then I also did acupuncture because acupuncture is also really magic medicine in terms of um, stabilizing things and you know balancing things and um, improving our vitality overall. So that's what I did and it was very helpful in my recovery and I've definitely also done this protocol with patients of mine who are long haul COVID um, syndrome folks and it's been helpful. So um, I hope this helps any of you guys out there who might need these specific types of nutrients. I hope most of you don't end up having to deal with COVID and that, you know, as we have additional things to help us get through COVID that you're able to, you know, just bypass COVID altogether. But um, in case you have to deal with some of these COVID long haul syndrome symptoms, I hope this helps you. Looking forward to seeing you back here soon. Tell Dr. Patty and I what you want to learn about this year and we'll do our very best to cover that content. Thanks so much for being here with us. We love you. Take great care. See you here soon.